Hey everybody, good morning. I hope you're enjoying autumn. I like to say autumn rather than fall. Not sure why, I just think it sounds better and it fits the season. I think I love autumn more than other seasons. Well, except spring. Well, summer's pretty good too. You know, it's, it's a toss up between spring, summer, and fall. Winter is just straight out. It's the ABCs of wood. We made it all the way up to K. That's way better than the, the first time I tried this whole ABCs gimmick a few years ago and I only made it up to C. But if I recall, those were three of my very best videos. K is for kickback. It's one of the very most important things that you need to know about a table saw and safety. Kickback injuries occur more often than cutting a finger on a table saw. I think this is especially true for new woodworkers. I think when you first get your table saw and you start looking through the owner's manual on it, there'll be a lot of information about keeping your fingers away from the blade and all of that is very good, but it very rarely covers much about techniques to avoid kickback or even what kickback is and how much damage it can do to your body. Kickback is when the rear of your table saw blade grabs a piece of wood you're cutting and throws it towards you. And since the blade is spinning at a kajillion miles per hour, that piece of wood flies back at you at like, light speed. It's math. I've seen some very serious injuries from kickback, either on the chest, the stomach, or right in the head. Another good reason to always wear safety glasses. Since the blade is spinning this direction, any piece of wood that might twist or get caught on one of those teeth will grab and get thrown back. Probably the single most important thing you can use to help prevent kickback is a riving knife. All table saws should have this piece of equipment installed right behind the blade, and it's the same thickness as the blade. So the idea here is that if you are cross cutting a board like this, imagine I'm cutting this board and then right here, it's partially cut through the board. I haven't cut all the way through yet, but by the time it gets to this point, the riving knife is preventing the board from binding into the teeth. Once it gets all the way through the cut, it won't grab on these teeth going in the upward direction. But let me take this riving knife off and show you what can happen. On cutting a board like this, by the time it cuts all the way through the board, it's possible that this piece can come in like that. And the same applies when you're using a rip fence. In fact, you can get probably more kickback when you're ripping a long board because what can happen is that the stress inside of this board can come together once you've made that curve, causing it to just bind on the back of that blade. So just short answer, always make sure you have your riving knife installed. That said, most of the cuts you do on a table saw will be unlikely to produce kickback because You've got one side of the board that you're supporting either with your rip fence or with your miter gauge. And then the other side, once the cut is made, it just falls free. There's no reason for it to throw back at you unless for some reason it gets twisted, which is why you need the riving knife on there. But there is a situation that can definitely cause kickback and that is when you have the rip fence and the miter gauge and you're using them both at the same time. And this can happen even with the riving knife in place. What happens is that the cutoff piece here can bind between the fence and the blade, causing it to twist slightly and kicking back. In other words, there's nowhere for it to just kind of fall free after the cut is made. But I think probably the single most dangerous cut you could ever attempt on a table saw would be a freehand cut. Just holding the board completely unsupported by a miter gauge or a rip fence. The chances of you getting this to twist one way or the other are super high and it, most likely you're gonna get kicked back. There's no reason to ever attempt a freehand cut on a table saw. There's no shortage of videos on YouTube showing actual kickback and the results of it. There's guys that have like holes in their walls due to pieces of wood that 
that have flown back. It's that powerful. But I wanted to do a demonstration to show this to you. And I, I think I'm going to use styrofoam. And I totally stole this idea from John Heiss. He recently j demonstrated some kickback in one of his videos using styrofoam. And I just thought, well, that is a really great idea. I'm going to try that. So I'm doing everything wrong here. There's no riving knife and I'm using my miter gauge with my rip fence. Don't try this at home. Go to your neighbor's home. It's almost hard to imagine how much force that cutoff piece has when it's sent backwards. I would not even attempt to try this with an actual board. There is no saw that's been invented that has automatic kickback sensing technology and it'll shut down right when it senses kickback coming. So kickback is all on you to prevent. I'll also include a link to John Heiss's video down in the description. So remember, always use a riving knife, never use your miter gauge and rip fence in combination. As much as you can, try to position your body out of line of fire and always wear safety glasses. Mail, 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 meow, 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 meow. Hey, I got some viewer mail I wanna catch up on. Hey, by the way, what'd you guys think of the new mail jingle, huh? I had my, I had my entire audio team working like Two weeks on that, at least. I think it's worth the $5,000 I spent on it, don't you? First up is John Marshall, and this was interesting. John Marshall is the only other person that I've met. Well, I haven't met him, he, he sent me a, a letter. But he sent me pictures of the exact same table saw I have. It's that Porter Cable table saw from like 10 years ago or something. They don't make those anymore, and so that was pretty cool. I mean, that is just identical, even with the weird insert plate on there that is like non-standard. That's the only thing about that saw that I don't really like. But what he mentioned about that saw was those rubber feet on it that he had the same problem. His kept falling off. I just eventually ended up removing all of mine. But what he did was he made, he glued on these just plywood blocks onto the bottom. I thought, wow, that is a perfect low-tech solution. But he had a couple of extra of those rubber feet that came with the thing, and he, so he sent those to me in case I, I can use them. I'm gonna keep those. I might be able to use them, but I'm missing all four. I, I, at one point, they were falling off, and I just decided to just get rid of them all. Oh, and he also had a really cool outfeed table solution that, to build onto that saw. That is something I've been thinking about doing for a long time, like, well, 10 years I've been thinking about doing that. So I'm gonna save your pictures, John, and refer to these, hopefully not too far in the future, I'm gonna make one of those. Oh, and I got a really nice note from Kristen, and I, I had to laugh when I, I read this, because she says her boyfriend and her have been, have been watching the show, they've been going back and watching the older episodes, which she finds cringy and informative. <laughs> I do too. And, I, and there's one one video in particular that's extra cringy because I, I read the comments and like not a day goes by where people aren't saying, this is the cringiest thing I've ever seen. But she sent me a bunch of, apparently she works with NASA and so she sent me a real, bunch of really cool NASA stickers. It's Mars. Actually, I'm not sure what this is. Oh wait, oh there's, oh, there's a note on the back. This is a mission sticker from Mars 2020. Can you see 2020? It took me a while at first. No. Do you guys see that? I don't even know which way it's supposed to go. I thought this was like a building back here. I'd say the logo on this one needs a little bit of work. Not about serious art. Oh, Stefan is an expat from Scotland. He lives out here in the Bay Area and he sent me this Scotland sticker. I guess he noticed one on my old truck. I had that on there because the Ramsey family is all from Scotland. Probably related to Gordon Ramsay too, except he spells his name wrong. Thanks, Steven. I don't know if it's Stefan or Steven. Whenever I see a, a P-H-E-N, 
go either way. And I got a real nice note from John Hammock who discovered my channel in mid-March, as a lot of people seem to have gotten into woodworking around that same time. And then he signed up for the weekend woodworker course and he's been going like crazy building things. And one of the things he mentioned was that when, or one of the things I mentioned in the coffee table project of the weekend woodworker course, I don't remember mentioning saying this, but it's been a while since I've watched that video, is that I wish I had something to do with the scraps that were left over from the bevels used to make those uh, table legs. And here's what he did with them. He made these really cool looking uh, coasters and I love the finish on it. Nothing makes a project more professional than a nice finish that you just want to touch. No touching wood jokes. Got a nice note from Andy and he again also kind of got into woodworking over these past six months. He said he wouldn't describe himself as a woodworker. He just mostly seems to use power tools to turn big bits of wood into smaller ones. But isn't that all we ever do? Uh, he said he wanted to send me some. He didn't have anything to send me, but his wife, it's probably girlfriend. I probably got that wrong. Let me, let me, let me double check here. Uh, oh, it is his wife. Congratulations. She's a designer and so she sent me a bunch of artwork that she did and I really like these. This is like some really nice looking prints. It's got airplanes on it. So that was really nice and that's, that's really great artwork. I like this style of artwork a lot. I also love that you, these were printed on matte paper. It seems like whenever you wanna print photographs, we almost always kind of go for the glossy photos but really nothing looks better than matte. And I got a few books from Bill K. Underwood. Looks like he is an author and sent me a couple of his, looks like fictional books, Unbroken and the Minotaur Medallion. And then, then this way, uh, 99 Ways to Fire Your Boss. Wait, do I really wanna do that? There's the other, co my other coaster is still over there. Ah. I was looking at these and I was thinking, who makes three coasters? There was four legs on that coffee table. <laughs> Well, there it is, right there. I got four coasters. That's almost as many people as I know. Thanks again for all the stuff, everybody. I really appreciate all this stuff. You guys are just too nice to me. Yum, 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 yum. Wow, it just occurred to me, this episode is all about stealing things. I saw <laughs> three different things I stole. First, I stole John Heiss's idea to use styrofoam to demonstrate kickback. Totally ripped him off. Uh, then, then the new jingle, that's the Meow Mix theme song. But the third one is the ABCs of woodworking jingle. And I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I, I also totally ripped off that, that tune. That's from South Park. Da, 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 da. <laughs> if you watch South Park, you'll know the episode with, with had a, a guy in a panda suit. Hey, you guys getting excited for Halloween? I've been thinking about my Halloween video. There's gonna be a Halloween video this year. I, I, I'm, I'm just formulating ideas in my head right now, but I think I'm in the, in the right direction. We may have a woodworking exorcist show up. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. These ideas change all the time. Hey, and if you are into Halloween, or if you're, especially if you're into watching scary movies like I am, I thought it would be fun over the next couple of weeks just to mention some movie recommendations, and I thought I would just like categorize these. So on today, I thought I would mention my favorite comedy horror movies. Kind of like your entry point into like full-fledged horror movies. Okay, these are just some that I came up with on the top of my head. I know there's a lot more comedy horrors, even like Scream, I think is a pretty funny movie, but these are pretty much strict comedy movies. I'll start with Happy Death Day. I thought Happy Death Day was a lot of fun. Babysitter 1 and 2. If you haven't seen Babysitter 2, it just came out. I, I think it's hilarious. Some meta humor with Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. That's one of my favorite movies. It's like a, uh, it's a mockumentary where they, they showcase like a slasher where he shows off the tricks of the trade and kind of an insider look <laughs> into the slasher. Oh, What We Do in the Shadows is a hilarious look at kind of vampires in modern culture and kind of trying to live their day-to-day -day lives. And it's uh, directed and written by Taika Waititi. You may know him as the director of Thor Ragnarok, but more recently he did Jojo Rabbit, which was really one of my favorite films of last year. Was it last year? I think it was last year. That's a total sidetrack, but see Jojo Rabbit. Oh, Shaun of the Dead is probably one of the greatest like, parodies ever made. And this is a parody of zombie movies. And if you love any of the George Romero zombie movies, really any, any zombie movie really, you'll 
will know all of the references and that it's hilarious. I just saw this one again a couple weeks ago and it reminded me of how much I love Tucker and Dale versus Evil. It kind of turns the like slasher tropes on their end where it's like these two hillbilly guys are all really well-meaning but this group of teenagers come in and misunderstand them and think that they're trying to kill them and, they, and the kids end up like dying accidentally and think that these two guys are doing it and I can't do it justice. And my number one horror comedy, and it's not really a horror movie at all, it's, and it's not even a zombie movie, is One Cut of the Dead. The first 30 minutes of this film is all shot in one take, and it's a legit one take. They're not stitching scenes together or anything. But that one scene is important because it leads into the rest of the film as why that was in one take. And I don't want to say anything more about One Cut of the Dead because it's so filled with surprises, and at the end of that movie, you're just going to have the biggest smile on your face. It is just, it's like a feel-good movie, really. So check out One Cut of the Dead. There's a few films to get you started on the Halloween season. I've got some other topics I'm kind of thinking about, like maybe found footage films, maybe like truly scary films, gory films. I don't know. I'll come up with these kind of lists and I'll, I'll give them to you if I can think about it. Otherwise, this may be the only one. I don't know. That's all I got for now. I'll see you guys later.